Hi, my name is Art and welcome to another Bumpai video. And in this video we will be reviewing another car brochure from the past. The Toyota Light Ace a Wagon brochure from August 1986. In the previous car brochure video you all picked massively for the Light Ace Wagon and the score ended up as following. Mazda 121, 3 votes, Mitsubishi Starion, 2 votes, Toyota Light Ace, 6 votes. So it's clear the Light Ace wins. Thank you all for voting and as usual you can vote again for the next car brochure that I will be reviewing. Just leave it in the comments below. I will review the choices at the end of this video. Before jumping into the brochure itself I'll give a little bit of background information on the Light Ace family. The car brochure we're going to review today is the third of the M series Light Ace. This new platform had the designation of M30, M40, M50, M60, M70 and an M80. The utilitarian M50 to M80 even remained in production until 2007. The Light Ace was sold through the Toyota Vista dealer network and this is different than the Town Ace and the Master Ace Surf that were also offered at the same time. You may know the Mazda Ace Surf as the Toyota van in the US and the Town Ace Wagon as the Tarago in Australia or Model F in Europe. Even though the models displayed here may look similar to the Light Ace in our brochure, they're actually on the older M20 platform, so that's the previous generation. The Mazda Ace Surf was sold through the Toyota store and the Town Ace through the Corolla store. And as you can think like, what are all these stores? Well, in Japan you have the various different Toyota stores. So the Vista store, the Toyota store and the Corolla store are all aimed at different categories of the population. So now let's have a look at our brochure. On the cover you can see some roof-like structure surrounded by outer space while the windows allow you to see some skyscrapers reaching out in the sky. And yes, Toyota couldn't have promoted their all-new skylight roof in a better way. Probably we would call it a panoramic roof nowadays, which is a standard feature on modern SUVs and vans. This was actually a new thing in 1986. Going into the brochure you can immediately see some light ace flying in outer space with the moon in the background and it can be much clearer than this. The light ace FXV wagon with the skylight roof is top of the line. The remark next to the picture is that this is a one box design. It's a seven seater and it has a skylight roof and the driving position is as low as an ordinary passenger car. This was also a big thing back in the 80s as most of the vans had a very high seating position which gave it a truck like experience. Nowadays people confuse a high seating position with safety like in uh, an SUV for instance. But in the 80s everyone thought they rather drove a family sedan than a van. Also notice that these rims can also be found on the Toyota Celica AT160. On to the next page. More space themed skylight roof on these pages as well and however this time you can enjoy the view of Mother Earth in the background. The Light Ace GXL just sits below the FHV and features a skylight roof as well. I really wonder would GXL stand for Galaxy? And then, if you think about it that way, the Death Star in the background and Darth Vader peering through the skylight roof wouldn't be out of place at all. Especially not with the typically 80s two-tone paint and the speed stripes on the side of the wagon. On to the next page, we can see something completely different. A super casual, no space theme, just some weird stunt planes in a formation and I have no clue what that has to do with super casual though. This trim level translates to super relaxed wagon if you look at the real meaning of casual. It has a skylight roof and there are some zany remarks here. New aspect to styling, sloping windshield for better aerodynamics. The super casual can be ordered in short and long springs probably to facilitate a bit more lift for off-roading. On the next page we are looking at the Grand Canyon here. Did Toyota hint that the four-wheel drive Light Ace FXV is actually able to cross the Grand Canyon? I don't know. You can easily see that it's the four-wheel drive version of the FXV. It has a five-lug nut heavy-duty wheels. 
And according to the remarks, the four-wheel drive mode is selectable, so most of the time you will be driving two-wheel drive on the rear axle. On to the next page. Now this is something I can always appreciate in Derek Weldon's videos. He's from Pacific Coast Auto and he does auction walk-around videos of Japanese vans. A proper demonstration of these incredible seats is a very nice thing to see. The seats can be either rotated or moved up. Sounds a bit weird, but that's the way these Japanese vans work. Today this is standard on all minivans in Japan, but back in the mid 80s this was revolutionary. And Derek demonstrated in some of his videos on their channel how they work and I have a link here to one of those videos. You can even make a flat floor out of these seats to make it a comfortable bed. Now, this is actually not the next page, but it is a strange fallout and it gives a bit more information. Just flipping back and forth you can see the bench seat moving around. As shown on the far left, the front bench can be folded up to a tiny box, accommodating a van-like space to haul cargo around. Another detail that can be seen on the left as well is a small fridge that is available under these cup holders. And the comfort in these minivans is unheard of. So we actually had a super casual and now we have a space casual. Space relaxed. Hmm. The space casual offered foldable bench seats that once folded down create an entire flat floor. This then would give you a usual space to sleep on or perhaps build some remote controlled gliders with your son. Also the ability to do this is great but it comes at a certain expense. If you look closely these seats don't really look comfortable to me. Next page, overview of cockpit and its gadgets. The most striking thing here are these off-road gauges. Roll and pitch indication can be very helpful off-road, but I actually wonder if anyone in Japan used it otherwise than on on and off ramps on the highway. It doesn't really make sense. Also that Pioneer head unit with cassette player, not available outside Japan, but we'll get to that later. Now this big fold-out page is one of my favorites in its brochure. Laser, engines and Pegasus suspension. And for those unfamiliar with these acronyms, laser, or laser, actually means lightweight advanced super responsive engine. And Pegasus means precision engineered geometrically advanced suspension. Basically, they don't mean anything at all. Engines offered were the 2C diesel, the trusty 5K, the 2Y and the 3Y gasoline engines. And none of these engines were actually performance grade engines, but they were mostly aimed at reliability. A small trivia about the 2Y and the 3Y engines, you can use those 2Y and 3Y bell housings if you want to fit a 3S engine to an indestructible Supra W57 gearbox. The most interesting part here is the four-wheel drive system. It features double wishbones up front and a solid rear axle in the back. And with the engine in the midsection, the weight distribution is ideal. It also features a separate chassis to increase strength and rigidity. And the one box body is then put on top of that. The normal rear-wheel drive is a one-box monocoque construction with the same double wishbone setup up front, but a solid rear axle in the back and it doesn't have a separate chassis. I have no clue how they achieved the turning circle of 4.2 meters here, maybe with power sliding, or maybe this is supposed to be the radius. But still, if it's the radius, that means that the turning circle actually is 8.4 meters in diameter, which is a smaller turning circle than the Daihatsu Mira has, which is 8.8 .8 meters. So that's either a very big achievement or they're just doing power slides here. And here the page actually folds back in again and then the other side shows you how easy it is to navigate your light days through the Japanese urban concrete jungle. Now, on to the next page. This probably is my second favorite of the whole brochure. All the various options you can get on the light days. And this is going to be a lengthy one. So let's start from the left top and work our way down to the right bottom. First of all, we have a nice light ace sun visor for the rear of the car, blocking nasty sunbeams. 
Halogen auto cover fog lights and what these basically do is when, once you power them on the cover will move up and uh, open up the fog lights and if you power it off covers automatically go back in place and they protect your fog lights. And I actually would like to have one of those on the Trano. Roof racks to accommodate up to 8 skis, very useful accessory when you are using the four-wheel drive to plow through snow. And who needs snow chains anyway if you have a four-wheel drive van? Trunk mats, trunk cover, available on models except the Space Casual. Shoe case to ensure that you can take your shoes and feel right at home in the light ace. And that kind of reminds me of the Levin driving kite that I uh, unboxed some time ago and it actually showed an optional shoe case for your Toyota Corolla 11 A86 as well. At the bottom we have a fashionably 80s rubber stripes to make your light ace even look more rigid and protect it from stone chipping. In the second row we can see uh, mostly uh, head units radios. Uh, we can see a Pioneer head unit that has a four-way computer control tuner deck featuring 25 watts of audio attainments and you can probably open it to insert a cassette tape in there. According to the writing this is skylight roof only so I guess somewhere in that skylight roof they must have hidden four speakers that are going to be attached to this radio. Next we have an auto reverse cassette head unit with equalizer available on the FXV and GXL. When these radios are not branded unlike the one above here, normally Toyota choose Hitachi for their choice of radios in the 80s, so probably this is a Hitachi unit. Next we have a FM Auto Reverse Cassette Head unit on all FXV models with line input for your portable CD players. And finally we have a programmable cassette head unit with Dolby noise reduction. At the bottom you can order also a color TV from National Panasonic that can rotate around. Onboard family entertainment in the mid 80s, Toyota was really ahead of its time with this light ace wagon. On to the next column. On the FXV and GXL you can order two-tone paint, extended rear lamps, drink tray in the FXV, mid console in the GXL with closing lid. On to the next column. Electric adjustable and heated mirrors on the FXV. Rear view mirror at the back for reverse and parallel parking. Console for the passengers in the rear with extra cigarette lighter and drink holders. A large mirror in the front to see the left side of the car including parking mirror. Then on the right side of the page we have a skylight roof windows can be removed entirely. So you can make it basically some sort of cabriolet, targa roof, I don't know how you would call it a targa roof, probably. Small fridge between the driver and passenger footwell, which can also make ice cubes, we've seen this before in uh, one of the previous pages. Large roof dome with a button for door, room and spotlights. Curtains to ensure you have extra privacy after you have folded all those seats down to become one big fluffy bed. Shack fan. The front of the skylight roof is also tinted to ensure that the driver doesn't get too hot and excited either. A large fluorescent light in the FXV to ensure you can see everything when it's dark outside. And finally the electric windows are standard on the XL7, optional on the FXV and the GXL. The GXL has them driver key enabled so your kids can't drain the battery while playing guillotine with your electric windows. Or at least that's what me and my brother did in the 80s. Here we get into the overviews of each and every model. So we have an overview here of the GXL and the FXV model. And if you ask me, those captain chairs on the FXV look much more comfortable than those plain seats in the GXL. Next page has the Space Casual and the Super Casual. No, nothing more to say about it. Then on to the next page, which has an overview of the DX, the Deluxe and the XL7. You can see that the Deluxe has very different headlights than the others. And both the Deluxe and the XL7 have different steering wheels and final seats. And my guess is that the XL7 is actually a utilitarian version of the Light Ace, the whole workman or something. Now we come to uh, the third favorite page of this whole brochure. We have the SW and all the specifications of these cars. It's not that the SW is my favorite, by the way. 
Interestingly enough, the older four-wheel drive versions featured a 2.0-liter 3Y engine, while the 1.8-liter 2Y engine is only available on the two-wheel drive versions of the FXV and the GXL. The 1.5-liter 5K engine is available on the Super Casual, Space Casual, XL7, DX and SW. A bit further down is the diesel area. The 2.0-liter 2CT turbo diesel engine is offered on all four-wheel drive versions and also on the two-wheel drive FXV and GXL. The normal 2.0-liter 2C engine is offered on the Super Casual, the XL7, the DX and the SW. Don't expect a lot from these engines. The most powerful is the 3YU engine with 88 horsepower in Japanese standard. And the turbo diesels were still very new in the 80s. 82 horsepower from a 2 liter turbo diesel is peanuts compared to the 239 horsepower German standard from the Volkswagen EA189. This is a 2 liter turbo diesel engine. And this engine was actually the one that featured the cheat mode when entering test mode, uh, blah, 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 diesel gate. Well, basically that's the end of the brochure. Um, I do have a couple of final thoughts on the Light Ace Wagon. Toyota really got it right the first time with the previous generation of the Light Ace Wagon and the boom of the minivan started with that generation. This next generation Light Ace tops the previous generation in many ways and making it much closer to an MPV than a minivan. It's actually a shame that Toyota never sold the FXV, the GXL and the four-wheel drive variants outside of Japan. It really would have been a bestseller all around the globe. For the next episode we have the following choices. We have the Dutch 1975 Mazda 1-2-1 brochure and we also have the Dutch Mitsubishi Starion brochure. And what I can also do is make a complimentary episode, so like a, a episode 2 of this, with the Toyota Master Ace Surf and the Town Ace Wagon. Just leave in the comments below what you would like to see next time. Okay, that's it. Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this car brochure review. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. Leave some comments below if you want to ask something, make a comment on something. And also share this if you like. And see you next time. Ba 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 bum, 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 b